Welcome everyone. This is Jim Sporer of iZip and this is our community introduction call. It's just a opportunity for us to get to know each other a little better. So I do have some slides that I'll share and uh, then I will model the kind of introduction we're going to be doing and uh, hand it over to Vishali. So let me see if I can get the slides going. Okay. Yeah, the theme for our introductions is give, get, grow. What we want to give to iZip, what we want to get out of iZip, and how we want to grow with iZip. And, um, you know, uh, Michelle is going to close us off with a great overview of iZip, so I'm not going to go into too much detail, but I will say we're almost up to 2,000 members. We started iZip in 2012 with a focus, of course, on service innovation. And our motivation was, you know, there's a lot of groups out there that focus on service innovation. There's the American Marketing Association. There's the uh, Informs for Operations Research. There's service computing. There's service design. There's service economics. But, but I think all of us on this call know that service innovation, you have to have the, the technical, the business, and the social, and the design all come together. So we created iZip to bring more of the what we call T-shaped people together, people who maybe are deep in the engineering, the business, the design, or the social sciences, but, but are working on their breadth so that they can communicate with others. So that's why we started iZip. Um, so as far as my uh, background, I'm a retired industry executive. I worked at Apple. I, I'm, I'm here in the Bay Area. I worked at Apple for 10 years. I worked at IBM for over 20 years, had all kinds of jobs uh, working with AI and education. Believe it or not, I was working for an AI startup in the 1970s after I graduated from MIT, a speech recognition company doing mathematical modeling back then. So yeah, 68 years old, and I've got a lot of stories to tell. Uh, been around quite a bit in terms of uh, the big technology companies. But what I've been, you know, since I retired a couple of years ago, what I'm trying to give to iZip is automating back-end parts of iZip. Every professional association, every nonprofit has a lot of operational stuff, back-end stuff. So my son, Stephen, and I, I love programming in Python. We've been working on little bits of code to automate some of the back-end and what I get out of being at iZip, and I've been, you know, I'm one of the founders of iZip. So I've been here since 2012, you know, it's 12 years old. And I remember some of the people in 2012 were students. And now they're like the vice president of HR at some billionaire's rocket company, you know? And I can remember like when they were just a little baby student, you know? And I I really enjoy watching career uh, the careers of people unfold and, and thinking that, uh, you know, we planted a little bit of the service innovation seed there in their career that was helpful to them. And how I wanna grow, and I know this is gonna sound scary to some people, but I really want it. I want my AI digital twin. So I want my uh, the version of Jim that can never sleep, work 24 hours a day, give talks, write papers, mentor students. And we've actually got some student projects at iZip where students are uh, creating AI digital twins. So um, I expect in a couple of years, we'll have an AI digital twin of me. So that is me. It's nice to meet you all. We're going to go around the horn. Uh, Vishali goes next. Vishali is uh, Maine. I, I knew Vishali when she was at IBM over a decade ago. Then she went to Google. Then she left Google. Now she's doing stuff. Now she's in Texas. I think when she was in IBM, she was in India. So Vishali is an amazing individual. She volunteered to be our community engagement leader. So Vishali, over to you. Thank you so much, Jim, and welcome everyone. Uh, thanks to ISIP and especially Jim for you know, in giving me this opportunity to be part of ISIP. It's amazing. I've been here uh, for the past couple of months and I'm still learning. And every day, every time I meet Jim, I feel this is my first day. And just letting you know, I know Jim said some numbers don't don't just don't just skip out those numbers of his age. Nothing of that speaks to his age. Trust me, this morning I was we had this meeting at 5 a.m. PST, which was 7 a.m. I logged in four minutes soon thinking that, oh, I'll let me be you know, early on time. And I saw Jim was sitting there after his morning walk, 
5 am i say you can imagine you know so i don't think the gym needs a digital twin i i want the real gym for all these meetings <laughs> and that's that's about uh, how how gym and i got connected from ibm to this far um, so i'm vishali main uh, i was i've been into you know uh, program management a lot of other roles in different places i've done my masters from indian institute of technology uh, back in the mid 90s and i was the only girl back in my in my class uh and i enjoy you know the way i took up new roles new you know challenges i was in india for quite some time i moved here i've been here for a little over a decade and there's still a lot to learn so when it comes to the ggg or the give get grow they are all intertangled i mean you cannot just have give or get or grow and being part of the community we do all of it at the same time uh the thing that i felt was very important was to in terms of give us to lend a pair of ears to listen there are so many stories that we can listen there are so many things people have to share and everyone has something special something nice to share to give you know to give it to the world and as part of that i would be very happy to listen to people being a community lead it's very important to know why people are joining i i said what's the goal and how we could help them grow here as a community that's what i'm looking forward to uh get is to learn the art of building a global you know technical community because in the morning we had people from other part of the world and it was nice knowing them connecting with them uh, and now we have people who are mostly in the in the us so it's it's a different time zone you're working with i would be glad to be part to get get to know the different learnings that i have and the grow mission is to grow together as a team as all of us you know help each other grow build things together be it a digital twin or be it anything the way jim jim wants it or any other stuff have we we have a lot of things to engage and i guess uh, i will not steal away those those you not know, slides or stuff from michelle as she takes you along that's a little bit about me feel free to connect uh, with me on linkedin and i've shared my uh, profile there or the linkedin connection page and i will now pass it on to hari over to you hari All right. Thank you, Vishali. Um, so, um, Jim and Michelle, uh, Vishali, we are we have been connected on LinkedIn for a while. I don't think we got a chance to actually speak in person. So, thank you for uh, you know taking this time and scheduling this call. It's so nice to meet you all of you, at least virtually. Um, um, just a brief intro on about me. Um, I'm based out of Princeton, New Jersey, right now. I work for an organization called Dow Jones. Um, you may or may not have heard about Dow Jones. It's one of the uh, publishing media companies under News Corporation. We publish Wall Street Journal, Balance, Market Watch, so on and so forth. But my role within this organization is like a senior product lead for their financial planning and analytics. And um, before this, I worked for um us bank and then for cognizant technology solutions for a long time um worked for several clients within banking financial services as a you know as a product lead like a business analyst so so many roles and uh i would say i have gained a lot of experience within the fintech space and michelle um was kind enough and got me an opportunity to speak at one of the engagements with the uh, University of Seattle recently so thank you Michelle for that and um <clears throat> yeah i think uh, that's pretty much about me oh the last thing i would say recently um i got uh, elected for uh, the board of directors for IPMA USA uh, one of the global uh, institutes for uh project management professionals and uh we are the only chapter here unlike pma we don't have a lot of chapters we have only one chapter and i'm the board of director i'm the vice president for that and next week we are conducting a global research conference um in university of maryland i'll be presenting a paper um along with several other professionals from all over the world so i'm pretty pretty excited and looking forward to that nice Let me say thank you, Hari. I heard you were fantastic with your yeah, you. in, impacts on fintech talk. Appreciate it. Oh, congratulations, Hari, and yeah, welcome to the group. Nice to see you here. We were we waiting to get a lot, learn a lot, and then work and grow with you. Uh, next, we could go over to Subu. 
Oh. I don't know if you want to call I, your name differently. I just called you the way it's written on the chat. Thank you, Vaishali. Uh, hope everyone can hear me. Uh, I may be the odd man out in this group in the sense my background is completely from manufacturing or a brick and mortar uh, legacy technologies or dying industries, whatever you may want to call it. But out of the dying industries came nuggets of uh, diamond, which we brought it to Silicon Valley. And that's my transition. And I'll share that in just a few words. I'm glad to hear uh, Jim is from MIT. Probably he graduated a few years after me in the sense I graduated in 1979 with my PhD. Uh, and 80, probably, you know, the birth of the computer in an active uh, use in most practical applications. That was also, in a way, the challenging role, challenging need for professionals to change their role from being just doing what they're asked to do to figuring out what needs to be done and why. I joined Ford Motor Company. Right then they were having what is called the Center of Excellence. What it meant was all the drafting people were all aggregated into one location in Germany using computer-aided de uh, design so that all the drafting people across the globe can be outsourced or dislocated or replaced by the sophisticated computer tools. I'm not saying anything bad about computers. We have to live with the computers, but we have to learn to live with the computers. And that's what we are learning today. And to me, any fear of artificial inte intelligence is really only 50 years old. In the sense, evolution in technology that replaces human skills with the skills of the digital technology is the way it goes. And it is during that time I learned that you don't go to job and do what your boss asks you to do, instead figure out what needs to be done and why. And I figured out the methodology for that, implemented in my own job, and then moved on and published a book on that in the year 2000 called System Approach, a way to configure any discussion, any problem, anything into an input transformation output system, where the transformation is a science behind the problem, application of the transformation of engineering, and what you want to transform and why with the strategy or the management or the problem. And so every professional is a technologist integrating science, engineering, and management almost relentlessly. It's what we all have to do. Those few who did well stayed on the jobs. Those who didn't do well got outsourced, automated, or displaced. And that has been the name of the game in every other industry other than probably in the Bay Area. Now I live in the Bay Area. I can see the difference between how things work here compared to how they work in Pennsylvania or Michigan or Ohio with all the brick and mortar companies. Now, based on that, I also figured out that hardware is only one third of the technology of any company. How to make the hardware is a second third and how to apply was a third component of the three or third portion. And that applications technology is really what is called a software. So when IBM was getting challenged through its uh, hardware mainframe computers or Motorola and uh, Texas Instruments are getting challenged, the king of the crown at the time was Microsoft. So I went to my boss and my chairman at the time and I said, look, you have, now we have also become a global company acquired by a French out of a brick and mortar Worcester based, Worcester, Massachusetts based Norton Abrasives. I told them we cannot survive unless we become an application technology centered company. The CEO understood the meaning behind that and gave me some funding. We set up a technology center based on application technology of abrasive products. And we established a technology center across the globe. We cut through that, we could bring in R&D for product development manufacturing for product rationalization. You could bring in marketing for how to sell the product. You could bring in customers for consulting. We essentially became a service provider by default rather than by design. And that is when I got to know Jim and his uh, effort in ICIP. So at that time, I don't know if I told Jim, probably I did, that Jim, don't think ICIP is just for some people. 
Every professional is a service provider one way or the other. Whether they like it or not, whether they understand it or not, whether they believe it or not, that's the way it is. Those who see it will survive, those who don't see it will struggle. And that also was not sufficient. Even if you're a service provider, entrepreneur was the one who was glorified because you went out, set up a company and made a lot of money or set up a equity and made a lot of stock option. But everyone cannot be an entrepreneur. You work in the job, you're 50 years old, you've got a family to take care of, so you cannot go out and set up a company and take those risks. But you can become an intrapreneur, that is become an entrepreneur within your own company, within your own job, within your own department, and still create solutions and add value to it. So to that, we came up with what's called the transformational skills and I published my second book in 2013 called Transformational Skills for Technical Professionals, which we trained now many of them across the globe and all the network of technology centers, India, China, Brazil, Australia, Japan, United States, all over the globe, are all grew from some of the even technicians who grew to become vice presidents of the company. Because academic education alone was not sufficient. Academic education combined with experience, combined with transformational skills, made them intrapreneurs or successful in their own jobs, which I believe is the core essential for any ICIC member anywhere in the globe. Then in 2011, just I retired, probably a year before Jim retired, and I started my own company called Systems um, STEMS Institute, Science-Based Technology Innovation and management solution. The reason for that was the word technology itself has to some extent been hijacked to think of it as only digital technology. Whereas technology is an integration of science, engineering, and management in any discipline. So I coined the term STEMS, which is science-based technology, innovation, and management solution. And we integrate knowledge for our clients. We set up a center based on that at IIT Madras in India that's one of the shining examples of innovating in the machine tool sector for and 12 projects were started. All 12 of them have led to commercial results. So that's the kind of thing that you can have provided your transformation. But the seventh transformational skill is what's called emotional intelligence, which is really what Jim touched upon as uh, uh, doing good for others, uh, get, give, get, and grow which really translates to be doing what is good for others, which in turn is also good for you. That led me to study philosophy and I wrote my third book this year called Spirituality in Practice. It's not a religious book by any means. In fact, every scientist in my opinion is spiritual to the extent they explore the phenomena of nature objectively, analytically, and without attachment. So I read in that, about that. And now I continue to discuss and spread the word within the limits of my own reach. And I look forward to work with so many of you. It will be a delightful pleasure to interact with all of you. Without belaboring further, I'll stop here. I'll put the link for my company's website on the chat box. Thank you for patience. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much, Sabu. That was so inspiring. You covered everything from MIT to IIT to spirituality and so many things which we do not. We always think of spirituality as something very different from technology, not realizing that everything in technology starts with us and it ends with us and everything falls in between that. So that was amazing. Thank you so much for giving us all the insight. The only additional thing I could say is just for more for levity than anything else. People ask me, why were the Vedas not published or written at that time? Because there was no digital technology at that time. <laughs> had it been there, <laughs> Vedas would have been every corner of the globe in the five century, five on the fifth century BC. <laughs> That's a wonderful example. Thank you so much, Subhu. I think thank I'll you. pass. Yeah, thank you. And welcome to the team. All, all the people are glad to have you here. And there's so much to learn from you. Mutual. Uh, it's mutual. Thank you. I will next call. May I request Angela to go ahead next with your introduction and the Give Get Grow team? Thank you so much, Angela. Hello, my name is Angelia McFarland. 
Um, I was invited or introduced, I sit by Nicole Rinky, um, and uh, she and I worked together at Dell Technologies, uh, and uh, we worked on a project this summer, um, uh, putting together a grant for the National Science Foundation um, for a uh, small business innovation research project. So uh, we're still awaiting to hear on that one, but um, it's a, uh, well, Nicole is actually gone and you guys who know Nicole, um, she's now at Innable, um, but I am still waiting on uh, to hear back from the National Science Foundation. I have a, um, a startup in stealth mode, um, looking at them for, thank you for funding to do the MVP um, it's in uh, the Web3 space, blockchain. It's a distributed, le distributed ledger um, solution for um, identity and data, for helping, helping individuals manage their identity and data. Um, and so I'm, I'm doing that. I also have a long history of marketing technology and um most people I, I i have a soapbox i have a marketing soapbox um i believe i feel that corporate greed hounds <laughs> sorry <laughs> have um taken marketing and put it in this little tiny silo of creativity but if you look at the discipline of marketing, the discipline came out of economics um, in the early uh, 20th century, um, and it is it, it is a discipline that drives um, commercialization in, in 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 an economy, um, and it's more than just pictures, um, and so well, it's more than just creative stuff, right? It's it starts with product and. Uh, I've had multiple arguments with people about the fact that product and marketing are not the same thing. Um, and usually I just stop talking because it's, it's usually one, it's just usually too contentious. Um, so I just let them, I let them believe what they believe. Um, but I, I cannot do my job and drive the business forward um, without a good understanding or, or product definition or product design. And so marketing always starts the product for me. And so on the, the other piece of work that I'm doing is uh, I started a company in 2007 called EOP Media. And in 2007, we started EOP Media because uh, we realized that social was the new media uh, it, it, versus media not being available to everyone before media was only available to conglomerates. Social was the new media. Um, did a bunch of things through EOP Media. It was it was a, a single member corporation. Um, and then recently, when I just when I left Dell last year, uh, had been looking a lot into Web three and data and AI, and had the realization that data is the new media uh, because he who controls the data uh, controls the message. And um, so we started EOP Media on the concept of uh, helping people. I call it, my, my marketing message is advancing big ideas, um, but it's the concept of, I, I don't do content, I don't do, I help people who have ideas um, and whatever that takes to get you from concept to value, uh, that's what we do. And so, and, and get, give, get, grow, I haven't seen Michelle's presentation yet, but I did see um, Jim and Vishali's Give, Get, Grow. Um, Jim, uh, Jim asked us to think about it and I was like, I don't know, Jim, because I don't know that much about the organization yet. But um, I, Give is hard because I don't know a lot about the organization. So I want to reserve my give. Um, get, um, a lot of times being an entrepreneur is very lonely. Uh, and so to be amongst other professionals who understand what I'm trying to do, 
Um, so, so the community aspect of, of ICIP is something um, that I'm very interested in. And GROW, um, I would love at some point as I begin to get more involved in the, in the organization, I, I do know like Nicole and another person in ICIP uh, got together and wrote a paper. Um, and that paper was published on, on ICIP. And um, I'd love to take the opportunity to grow that part of my career and that part of my skill set um, to identify a project, an ICIP project, um, and, uh, and partner with someone in ICIP and uh, do the research and, and, and publish something. Thanks. That's that's amazing, Angelia. Sorry, I didn't call your name correctly. I thought it was double L A, so it's Angelia. Yeah. I'll I'll make sure I call you correctly next time. Uh, nice Thank to know. You. I think it's it's great to know. I think that when you say you have you don't know what to give, when you say that you help people, you know, go from idea from concepts to fact or to realities, that's an inspiration for most of us. We heard that and we know what is that you have to give. So that's nice. Um uh, we all are here uh, as a community, as part of it. Some of us could be new, fairly new to ICIP, unlike Jim, who is the founder, and then Michelle has been around for a while and other people. So yeah, there's different levels of people who could come forward. Thank you so much, Angelia, once again. Um, I will next call Lena. That's, uh, the way I can see it on the screen, excuse me, if that's how everyone else sees that. Uh, please go ahead with your introduction and welcome to the team. Yeah, uh, thank you, Ashani. Um, I was introduced to ICIF uh, several years ago by Jim, and we were fortunate to have him as a, a panelist of several panels we uh, moderated um, by, with my colleagues. And uh, um, I think that uh, since I joined the um, association, I felt like the mission of the association, every part of it touches my heart because I, I am a uh, um, basically technology by training. My education was in AI. And I'm currently a faculty of, uh, yeah, professor in management information system at University of uh, North, North Carolina at Charlotte. So I'm in business school. So that's the other aspect that ISIS want to touch on. And my research also addressed a lot of human factors and societal impacts. So every part of the mission of the association really, uh, yeah, um, is a, uh, uh, touch my uh, dear heart so um and um being um and also um being part of the association makes me kind of more aware of the responsibility because of being an educator i interact with the students and at um, different levels and um, on daily basis so i always trying to um yeah find uh, better solutions um to empowering students um, and also augment their abilities uh, rather than having technology uh, replacing them or even um, having technology consuming them. So currently I really somehow have a concern just uh, not only college students, also certainly the high school and the middle school students, they just uh, yeah get got used to, to live, live in online space and they just uh, yeah, some some people can really take advantage of uh, all the uh, um, uh, services, knowledge, and uh, um, opportunities available online to uh, augment themselves. Where well, others, um, yeah, they just uh, probably feel addicted to the online environment. Yeah, consume most of the time on um, kind of uh, <laughs> online games and, uh, or social media. So I'm not saying they are not good. Just if you spend too much time. And without purpose, right, just for entertainment or for fun, that may not be a good idea. So this has been, yeah, also some issue I think all uh, all the time. So how can we really um, innovate uh, like education or um, uh, certainly education is one of the uh, leaving the core of the service uh, a sector. So how we can really innovate um, education to really um, with good use of the technology. And um, on one hand, the technology is there. We yeah, we cannot just uh, um, restrict students like uh, to not to <laughs> approach technology such as chat GPT. Um, yeah, it's there and it's better for them to use them to really help them to uh, with learning, with the 
every uh, other aspect of their career development. On the other hand, the how to better, yeah, really um, use technology, really augment themselves rather than making them highly dependent on technology and to have them grow internally. That's something I really um, try to um, struggle. Yeah, some questions I try to struggle on a daily basis and trying to find good solutions. And uh, and I hear a lot of uh, um, uh, existing members and new members are uh, very established uh, um, entrepreneurs and the professionals in the industry. I really uh, hope if you have a chance to speak with our students, uh, uh, my door is open and having uh, experienced the uh, um, uh, practitioners um, like uh, you all to speak to our students will be uh, very um, not only helpful, so your personal experience will be more convincing and motivating and uh, uh, yeah, can help them really shape their uh, viewpoints or even uh, the career um, development. So I really look forward to have more opportunity to interact with uh, um, yeah, other members of the yeah, ISIP. Thank you. Jim, if you want to say something for any of these, please go ahead. Uh, oh, I could, I could say a lot, but I'm curious to hear more introductions. And and usually after Michelle, we if we have time, we uh, go around and and say a fun fact, just a quick fun fun fact about us. So Vishali likes to do that at the end if we have time. So um, yeah, we should probably move on so we have time for. Uh, I see we haven't Rin. Uh, um, we, yeah. Rahul, Rahul. Rahul and Abhishek, yeah. And then Michelle. So I see at least three people. Yeah, of course, Michelle. I shouldn't forget that. Michelle <laughs> comes at the end. Yeah. So thanks for thank you so much, Lena, for the introduction. It's nice. I didn't even think of that people could talk to your you know students and get things. I do have these. I think all I may call it motivational quotes on LinkedIn. And today I incidentally wrote, "If you think you are educated, if you think of a better tomorrow, you are educated." So I can understand from where that education, you know, the students and how we should reduce the dependency is coming from. That was a different perspective. Thanks for sharing that. Um, and I'm very glad that uh, Jim has these nice sparkles on the chat where he's putting quotes and he's you know, sharing so many things. Feel free to put your LinkedIn uh, page or profile if you wish to be connected and share it with others on the team. Thank you, Lena. Once again, I will go over to Rahul next. And by the time we come back towards the end, think of one fun fact that you would want to share today and we give you some time for that. Over to you, Rahul. Welcome to the group. Uh, hi, everyone. Very good afternoon. Uh, very good evening to everyone. So my journey with ICIP started with uh, interacting with Nicole. So like that time, she was working at Dell Technologies. And even at that time, I was employed there. And then I read her book and came to know about ICIP. And since 2022, I'm a member of it. And I mean to say like, it was quite luckily that when I browsed through the website, I saw that even Cal State, from Cal State Long Beach, uh, Professor Deborah, she is collaborating. So I also had like a word with her in her office. And then after like here at the university, I founded a AI research club and then we are collaborating with each other. So that's like a short introduction. Like uh, going, going back to my educational background, I have my like bachelor's in computer science and currently like a graduate student. And I worked for companies, uh, Dell and HP for over like uh, 10 years. Now, uh, when it comes to like three Gs, right? So, I see it in a two way. So one I see like in a philosophical frame that how those three are put in a sequential order. And that makes me induced like this looks like a domino. So what I feel personally is that if I do the first one, the second one will be done. And the third one is like a outcome. So we don't need to do the third. So if we just do the two, we get the third. So that, that's what my understanding is. And when it comes to giving, I feel like we all are here to give. Not with some intention of like getting something. So 
just give that's all like like uh even in like uh some some philosophical quotes they say like all even like non-living things here are just to give not to serve their own purpose so with this i will just conclude thank that you a, thank you so much rahul that has a domino effect on all of us and thanks for putting that together that was really nice a cool introduction and I will now uh, read Rin. So Rin, if I, if I call your name right, you have a sweet name with just three letters. That's very cute. Thank you. Uh, and yeah, you got it right. Uh, hi. So I found ISIP just randomly uh, through, you know, browsing and looking for interest. So I don't know anyone prior to Jim's email. Um my background is uh, international nutrition, so a focus on public health. And I very much am an interdisciplinary artist and technologist. So my background is health that I've pivoted into very much a kaleidoscope career where I've been a farmer, a teacher, and have worked in tech for six and a half years as a product builder, including Skunk Works Initiative for a digital healthcare analytics company. And uh, right now I'm transitioning and pivoting into entrepreneurship with a focus on uh, services regarding design science, emerging technology, and uh, inclusive curriculum. So one element is services, and then the other element is building a startup that is very much rooted in behavioral science, neuroscience, and inclusive curriculum with a focus on K-12 youth. So new to entrepreneurship, but juggling quite a few things. And so my focus is basically creating a network that has that innovative mindset. And that's why I'm, I'm here. And then hoping with this, the three G's approach, I really like that uh, articulation role. So my giving is I am very much creative and that's how I operate. So I'm here for, you know, consultations if that's needed, uh, design services, strategy, or anything on that umbrella. And then getting, I'm hoping to get more support when it comes to business mentorship or peer-to-peer -peer mentorship. Uh, Angela, I think, you know, what you articulated, it's, it's very much a growing and kind of lonely journey when you're doing this. So... Um, that's where I'm at. And then I also think that naturally the network and the research area that I would like to expand in and my grow will take an effect. Uh, so yeah, lovely to meet you all. Thank you so much, Ren. It was nice knowing you. I think you're juggling too many balls in the air and we all of us <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. yes, I see that a lot of you have your multi-talented, a farmer, teacher, tech, now an entrepreneur, so that's 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 quite interesting. Glad to the to the group. I know you said you don't know anyone now. You know these eight or nine faces. You know, especially sure. has been around. Feel free to reach out to any one of us on LinkedIn, and we would be more than happy to you know welcome uh, you to the team. Yeah, Jim. Uh, thank you. I and thank you again, Ren and Vishali. I Ab Abhishek may or may not want to introduce himself. I don't know. It's it's fine if you don't want to introduce yourself, Abhishek. But I see you're here. <laughs> Oh, there you are. I'm, I'm right here, uh, Jim. Uh, and in this, uh, you know, August company with such uh, impressive, uh, you know, credentials that everybody has in this uh, forum, I'm more than, uh, you know, overwhelmed. Uh, uh, just to introduce myself, uh, I'm a chartered accountant uh, from India academically. And then for almost two decades, I've been working in the ERP implementation space. I spent the uh, last few years to evolve into you know, start, strategy and transformation. So I am still a disciple, not a expert like uh, uh, you know, Subhu. Uh, and uh, as part of that journey, I'm trying to get my doctorate. I got uh, introduced to ISEP uh, through an ex-colleague of mine as we were you know, looking for forums where to you know, publish our uh, thought leadership. So here I am. Jim. Uh, come off mute and say, very good. And uh, just so we have enough time for Michelle, we should probably go to Michelle now and then 
think of something fun that you might want to share with the group, just a little little parting quick quick uh, fun fact. And Michelle, you should be able to share your screen. I think you're co-host. So if you want to share your screen. I, it wasn't, and now it is. So excellent. Thank you. Actually, my quick give get. Um, I'm, I founded and run a marketing company. And thank you so much, Angelia. <laughs> Um, called Carol Co Marketing, and and oh, I appreciated your perspective. So, my give though is is bringing that kind of how to how to grow, and you know, marketing a company because I I started two years ago with Isaac, and um, it is the most amazing product, right? As a community of practice uh, and an association where everybody involved in any aspect of innovation, service innovation can connect learn from each other and the product is amazing and I'm you know I come from networks that are kind of big and and ISAP is not known so you know our, our goal here is growing um, keeping the kind of technologist engineers principal engineer existing membership a couple thousand it is mostly in the tech zone um, happy connected doing you know learning innovating um, and grow awareness to broader communities that because Sabu, you're absolutely right I it's not for some it's everybody is in service if you're you know uh, good people working to improve the world are in service you know some aspect um so I'm going to walk you through um this presentation is the one when you go to our homepage eyesup.org um you can download this so I won't delve deeply into it, you can, but um, this is here as a resource to you, as is, by the way, this back, Zoom background. If you find yourself wanting to talk about us to different audiences um, as a member or a leader, um, if you step into any of these volunteer roles we're going to talk about. Um, but this is the presentation of who we are and how we basically express ourselves now to folks. Um, feedback always welcome. So uh, Jim had shared this with you. We are a growing global community of innovators um, all in all walks of um, advancing innovation to benefit people, business, society, right? And we're now up to, it is um, nearly a couple thousand individuals, more than 600 companies, organizations, um, more than 200 universities or educational institutions in um, 70 countries now. Um, and if you look on our website now, basically there's a leadership page where you can just see the companies um, and institutions that um, Eyes of Leadership is with run from the super big global leaders like IBM, Cisco, Dell, Meta, Amazon even, um, to uh, startups and, and smaller companies. That was our board, our executive leadership, our strategy council which define what the topics will be that we'll focus on. They come from a real cross section of, um, you know, industry, academia, NGO, and government for interesting perspective um, on the issues that we're facing. So how do we advance innovation to benefit people, business, society? I, we're kind of categorizing it into these four sections you'll see on the website. Um, events, we host regular events, and this calendar that's on our events page is, you know, running across month, you can see what the topics are and what's going on to kind of, this you can, you know, download onto your, import to your calendars, um, but for that regular exchange of ideas and information, we uh, recognize excellence in, in a service innovation where it's happening. There's a call in the fall for nominations. So to all of you, if you're doing interesting work, nominate yourself, your team, your, your company, spread the word, get people to help other people know these innovations are happening, right? So, um, and you can go to the award section to see this year's winners we just announced actually, and, and all of last year's and prior years for info on them. Um, publishing. Uh, Angela, I think it was, who are interested in doing that. So uh, Jim Spore and Haluk Demarkian manage our this a partnership with Business Experts Press for 
uh, no charge to ISAP members, they'll help you. Um, either you can write and contribute chapters to a book in development or publish your own book if that's your um, goal. And then the AI collab, where we do collaboration in kind of two broad buckets, ambassadors, liaise as an ISAP representative to if there's some other organization you have a passion for, an interest in, you can be the ISAP ambassador to that conference or group or research initiative or something else that you're passionate about um, and then bring the word to Isaac community and represent us there. Um, and the AI collab um, is the academic industry uh, offering where we've got five active universities working with uh, Jim and four or five other Isaac leader mentors um, and guides to the students and there's undergrad, graduate, and um, fascinatingly different student groups at these different universities working now on um, digital twin and generative AI projects uh, with Jim's guidance. Um, and then I'm upset there, but each of these you can drill down. So in the award section, read more about the work of that was recognized for excellence and in service innovation. There's five different kinds of events that we host from the very short. All those award winners are nominated to, or are invited to um, just have a 30, 40 minute online like this, Zoom, to talk about your work, what it is you're doing, share some highlights, introduce the team. Um, and ISAP members can show up um, or those are available on YouTube after. In our, we have a huge YouTube channel. Ambassadors can pull together a panel on a topic important to you, and you find the panelists and a moderator. And um, those two little recordings and one hour sessions become available. Discovery summits are deeper dives into a topic. We're going to have two discovery series this year one on um, the topic uh, in partnership with uh, Penn State. University School of Engineering, uh, exploring across different industry sectors, um, the key issues and impacts of AI. And, uh, Jim and Vital Prabhu are co-chairing that one. And I'm gonna work with Kazu um, Shimada from Japan Science and Technology on a series on the topic of democracy in this year when more than half the world's population are going to elections. Um, we do sponsored 10 conferences. So there's white papers there that, you know, ISAP leadership will help judge, help organize these conferences or contribute as a speaker. And those are all outreach events, idea sharing and forums for exchange of ideas. And now this year, we're just launching new this, Give, Get, Grow. To As we're growing, we want to better connect with each other, right? Click, click. So um, there's a live call for authors now for that partnership with Business Expert Press on the website. There's more about how to become an ambassador. You get involved with AI Collab. Um, and we are uh, free. It is free to be a member of ISAP and we're funded by our institutional members. It's a tiered investment and engagement system um, sketched here. And if you're interested in institutional membership, or if you think you might know someone who is, I'd be the person to talk to. And I'm Michelle Carroll, Executive Director of Isaac. Thank you. Um, I did also have, I'm not sure how to quickly get over to, here we go. Um, oh, Jim, I'm having the same issue. Wrong Google thing showing up. Let's get to Isa. Well, I was going to show you also, but let me just suggest that you um, also check out the newsletter. New every month is just, you know, a real quick recap of um, what is going on. We did just announce our awards um, and are about to announce the two separate discovery series. So you'll see one announced shortly and the other next month. Um, and there's always something going on. I do encourage you to keep up with the blog page. And and actually, Jim, are you guys going to show that last call to action slide or did you want me to? Uh, let's see. I can go ahead and show that. Um, 
I'll share. And um, <clears throat> this is our call to action. Every uh, And maybe before the call to action, I'll just say the survey results were three common themes. Uh, grow professional network was one thing everybody said. They wanted to grow their grow their network. They wanted to give their time, enthusiasm, expertise on collaborative projects, and they wanted to get professional recognition for some of their activities. So that was our survey results. And there's examples that I pulled from that survey that some of you took. So thank you. And here is our call to action. Uh, Michelle, if you want to. Yeah, I just want to say, well, it does sound like all of you are, you're registered as members. Thank you. And But if you haven't already, please do follow the LinkedIn company page. We should probably put these all into chat if we uh, didn't. Um, and there, there's two separate. We have our company profile page where you'll see the latest announcements like um, we announced the Service Innovation Excellence and in Service Innovation Awards um, yesterday. Um, separately is the group, the LinkedIn group, which is a pri private group. And you're encouraged to, you know, connect within that private group and just share what you're up to. And, you know, uh, several of you are with startups and would love that community and direct feedback. And that's where to do it in the, in the LinkedIn group. Um, and then there is that YouTube channel slide share for looking at an incredible resource, which um, we are, by the way, about to redesign the website and put some organization to that YouTube channel. Um, and there's the link to for, you know, registering for upcoming events, because, you know, with all the time zone difference and with everybody being as busy as we are, whether or not you can make it, if you register, you get the links later, you know, for the recordings and volunteer last one. <laughs> so there is a need. We are volunteer managed and run and uh, there's a need for help in everything I just mentioned. Right. Because we are growing and there's more of it going on. Um, so if you click on that link, the opportunities is kind of a list of stuff that would be helpful to have help on. Um, and we're growing. And, you know, if you have a different and better idea, that's welcome too. So we are going to be shaped by who it is you are, what it is you're best at, want to do, and what we need in that intersection, right? To give, get, grow together. Great, thanks. And I, we, we got six minutes left, so we could have a lot of fun facts if people are willing to share. I, I'll go first. So um, just a few days ago was um, the 50th anniversary of Carrie, the book, the very scary book by the author Stephen King. And I grew up in Maine, and I had Stephen King as a high school English teacher. How <laughs> that's my fun fact. So I was at Hamden Academy with Stephen King as an English teacher. So if I get scary sometimes, it's probably because of that early childhood experience. So uh, Vishali, I've already hinted that you cook uh, <laughs> foodie and that you cook really yeah. great cookies, but you want to go next and then we can, uh, people, Thank other you, people want to share. Fun yeah, fact. I, for, I think in the past six years, six, six plus years, when I was back in Austin in 2016 or so, um, I did I did uh, try doing some cookies and that those are eggless because I have allergies to eggs. So I think still now I have baked 19,000 cookies, a bite size, not too big, but they're yummy. That's what people say when they have it. I'm not very fond of sweets or not a foodie, but that's a fun fact. It's a fact. The 19,000 is real numbers, 19,000 plus something-ish. So that's what I do on the side. And I'm also a very creative person in terms of doing arts and stuff. So that's a little bit about me and... I think who wants to go next? Michelle, you could try fun fact. Oh, sure. I have, um, <laughs> wow, what zone to share from. Um, I have uh, two grown daughters and no um, human offspring among them yet. So I have had a grand pig, though. And the, uh, the kind of famous um, dog of Instagram called Mighty Akiwi, that's my grand pup. She's a pit bull. <laughs> Mighty Akiwi. Look her up. They're fantastic little videos. Hey. Anyone else? Fun I fact. can go. I have a fun fact. You guys made me think of one. I I, I was I was over here sweating because I was like, I can't think of one. <laughs> um, I also have a grand pup and I have three adult children and no grandchildren. <laughs> but I have a grand pup. 
Um, but I told you guys that I have the EOP media and it's been many things over the years. Uh, one for about a four year period, my husband and I um, used the LLC and we did a DBA as a food trailer in suburban Austin. So we had the sweet and cheesy food trailer in suburban Austin from 2016, 2016 um, to 2018. Um, and, uh, at that time, every time a food trailer came in the suburb suburbs, they, they weren't successful. Um, but my husband and I were really successful and we opened up, um, round rock to other food trailers. So a lot of the food trailers that came after us, like some of them would come up and ask my husband, like, how do I get into food trailers? Uh, they're still running. So he helped them get started and they're still, they're still operating and they're still in the suburbs. So, so we, it was called sweet and cheesy. We did gourmet grilled cheese sandwiches and all natural shaved ice. <laughs> <laughs> shaved ice. That, that's great. So much food going around in the room. So I think so I'm exactly in round rock, just letting you know that I'm exactly in the suburb of round rock. Okay. Thank you so I'll much. I'll tell everybody. you something fun. Uh, I have a, grandson and a granddaughter. My granddaughter, when she was one and a half years old, now she's seven years old, they, they had taken her to pick strawberries. She had come home and then went home with her parents. On her way in the car, she started crying because she thought she had a little less strawberry than what she had picked. And she started saying, Grandpa took my strawberries. <laughs> And she won't stop crying without re repeating, Grandpa took my strawberries. <laughs> so I, I, it's no, I couldn't forget that incident. Now she's seven years old. And yesterday I sat with her in front of the computer and she did her first PowerPoint slide pre preparation. So <laughs> life goes much faster for those kids than we did. Just thought I'd share with you. Got over the missing strawberries. <laughs> <laughs> But I still remember Grandpa stole the berries. <laughs> that was cute. If anyone wants to skip the fun fact, that's fine. But if anyone wants to go next week, dear, I will go ahead. Who we'll raised his hand? Yeah, but... Go ahead. Rahul? Oh, so I was saying that this last month, just because of the AM and the PM issue, I just missed my flight. And I have really a bad sense of like direction and keeping the track of the time. <laughs> That's a nice excuse that it will be on my PM. No, see, that, that happens to me. That. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, intrigued to go next. Oh, I'll call Lena. Go ahead. Yeah, sure. Go. So you are talking about digital twins. I live with the physical twins. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, they are not like taking turns, right? So I hope that when when one is a uh, Active, the other one is kind of a, yeah, a sleeping, give me a break, but they are always kind of a double trouble. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so it's, uh, um, yeah, I, I'm trying to understand, yeah, the how the how we can design digital twins really help us instead of uh, making uh, our task more challenging. So, um, yeah, so the, yeah, the it's hard to, yeah, I still trying to learn, they are there already. Um, not not a college level, but high in high schools, and the, the um the, yeah, when they need to create a I, I think about the idea of creating a group or a club in the school, and the first term they come up is uh, yeah when the boys came up is a uh, let's call uh, create an anti parent group so that's his first idea so yeah it's uh, so challenging and <laughs> teenagers what can I say good luck. Uh, <laughs> We're at time, but if anybody has a fun fact, don't hesitate to jump in. Yeah. Rin wanted to go. Oh, Rin. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, I'll, I'm a fraternal twin, but that's not the, the fun fact. Um, but since we're talking about twins, I mentioned it. Uh, my fun fact is I got to do a skydive ultra. So mm -hmm. you skydive and then you get out of your gear and then you run an ultra marathon. Uh, so that was pretty cool. Yeah, Skydive Ultra. I've got a son that might like that. It's a 
called Ultras or Skydive Ultra, and it's in Clouston, Florida. I think they're still doing it. You can do up to like 300 miles. Cool, cool. Going once, going twice. Anyone else? Wonderful. All right. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate it. I'll uh, send Thank it you. later. Bye for now. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.